What is up guys? And I was finally in the market looking for a second monitor. And if you don't know what laptop I edit with as my fully working video editing laptop, link in the description below if you want to check it out, is I'm editing on the Dell XPS 9th generation i7 model. But because of me needing a second monitor, I was like, what's the best on the market right now within my budget? And I decided to get, if you can't see over here, this is the one and only Dell P2419H. I'm gonna go over my reviews on it. Is it actually the best video editing laptop? Should you even consider it as a second monitor or your main monitor? I'm gonna go over the specs as well as doing a video editing color comparison of what it looks like from my laptop to my Dell 2419H monitor. And who is this monitor for? Let me know what you guys think. Everything that I'll talk about is in the description below. My name is Peter. Let's get into the initial unboxing. And before we get into it, this review was made over a couple of days and I did not just unbox it and make a fake review. This is, I've taken time to actually review this stuff, you know? I don't know what other people are doing, but I actually review and take my time with it. So let's see happen. So uh, look what I got in the mail. It was time to finally upgrade and have a second monitor and I decided to get the Dell 2419P series, so professional P2419H to have as a second video editing screen and I decided to stick with Dell and here's my unboxing and I'll also a couple days down the line give you my honest reviews on it and whether or not this is a good monitor to use. So here's the monitor in all its beauty. Put that off to the side. What does it come with? This should be the stand itself. My neighbors are cutting the grass, so uh, excuse me. I'm guessing this is the mounting plate. Here is your base plate, I'm guessing. Because I've read whether or not it actually comes with a micro or a HDMI cable. So we'll figure that out. A couple uh, USBs here. Or this is just your DP cable. Your, uh, what is this? USB 2.0 to another cable. I'm not a video head, so let me know what kind of cable this is. So what it comes with, everything here, you got your screen, your uh, stand, your plate, your AC plug. First is you want to grab this guy and fit this underneath here. Is it one of those that does it just click or you got to twist it? Oh, I see. It's like a tripod thing. Okay. Got it here and you got to twist this righty tighty, I'm guessing. Put the screen face down with the cardboard to cover it. Like this. Does it, does this just click into place? Pop first. Oh wow, really? That's pretty good engineering there, Dell. There's the monitor, man. Turn it around, it can this is one of the reasons why I bought it, because it can look at me. I can do a portrait view. And the plug is to the left. That's nice. Ow. Ow. The stand goes, does go up and down. It's height adjustable. This goes in there, HDM die go, and we're good. So I'm gonna be running this guy to the test how it looks, and it's definitely an upgrade with my current Dell XPS. Decided to stick with Dell, so give you all my honest opinions. But so far, the reason why I wanted to buy this, because it does tilt. So the Dell 2419H is a 24 inch monitor, 16 by nine, with the ultra thin bezel and an IPS monitor. To be exact, it is 23.8 inches with a rough estimate of 20.75 by 11.67 inches. It is an IPS type LCD panel. It is not touchscreen with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and a PPI or pixel per inch of 92. It has a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1 with a refresh rate of 60 hertz. It has one DP out 
input, which essentially allows you to daisy chain or have multiple a second monitor without connecting your monitor to your actual PC. You can have it to monitor to monitor and then to your PC as well as it has one normal HDMI input, one VGA, one USB type B and USB type A 3.1 and those are its connectivity. It does not have built-in speakers as well as it does not have any touch screen. So its physical height adjustment can go up to 130 millimeters with a rotation adjustment of negative 90 to 90 degrees. And that's what you need to know about this Dell P2419H monitor. So me being a video creator, I have not seen other video reviews about this same monitor, specifically for content creation. Well, guess what? You're in luck, because my name is Peter from Broke Visionary Collective, where I help you create something out of nothing, all through video. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have a video comparison between my own Dell XPS 15 laptop monitor in comparison to the Dell 2419HP series and uh, give you guys an overall, what's the difference between this monitor and uh, this monitor. And so just for fairness sake, I'm gonna put both of my monitors on 100% brightness so you guys can see the exact difference, as well as the P2419H is I'm gonna have it on a standard profile. What I'm doing right now, adjusting it, cranking this all the way up to 100 down all the way so as you can see this well that camera is really bright i'm going to change the auto balance in a minute this is the brightest that the monitor will go and also i'll put the brightest on my own laptop monitor so we're going to go into a video editing i'm going to whip out the same video on my own youtube channel if you haven't subscribed yet why aren't you subscribed so i'm going to do that I'll give you guys the exact comparison of how the different monitors and why color accuracy is so important when it comes to content creation so i want you guys to have a look over here of how different these two monitors look I'm gonna zoom in so to my left is my dell xps 15 and to my right is the one and only Dell 24H. And the importance of having color accuracy is so important, especially if you're a colorist or you're doing any sort of video work. So I'm gonna full screen both on 4K quality settings. And as you can see here, the left, which is my laptop, is very different from the monitor. So first thing I noticed right away, my laptop is naturally just more contrasted contrasting as well as there's more saturation the reds here in my face and as you can see the monitor itself looks a little bit more sharper in comparison to the right over here the dell 24h 2419 h is that it looks less saturated it doesn't look as sharp and less contrasted and why this is so important is that for quite some time now the I would assume the Dell XPS 15 monitor is not color accurate in terms of editing and this is why my footage luckily has not been too much a difference when I edit. As you can see here, the monitor looks fine. The importance of having color accuracy in your monitors will make a huge difference of how you view the footage and most importantly, how you edit the footage. If something looks like this while you're rendering it and how you view it, looks fine but if you play it on a second monitor and it looks completely less saturated less contrasted and then you're obviously going to bump up your color while you're editing so having the right monitor is so important which is why i decided to pick up the dell 2419 is to use this as a reference monitor to see my color accuracy so difference from standard laptop monitors is it's built in factory settings is they have everything a little more contrasted right as you see with my video, I'm much more contrasted here, much more saturation compared to here. And the thing with my uh, Dell is I can actually change up the color profile. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the menu button and change up the profiles to see how much different this color can actually get. So I'm gonna go down to comfort view. Now you can see that is way too yellow. This is a movie mode, which is, actually looks a lot more similar to my laptop, but still my laptop is a lot warmer. There's game mode, as you can see. It's sort of matching my Dell monitor, XPS 15. You have warm, cool, 
and you can have custom as well. But for me, while I'm, while I'm editing, I'm probably gonna go towards game mode or standard. But for the purpose of this review, I'm just gonna show you guys what it looks like on standard view. And of course, you can have your custom color and changing your RGB. But for me, for ease of use and coloring, I think standard would be my go-to choice. So my overall thoughts on the Dell P series, which stands for professional, 24 inch made in 2019 H model is that yes, I actually I'm, I am very happy with my purchase of using this specifically as a second monitor to my laptop made for the intentions of video editing and video content creation. It's always good to have a reference monitor to see how your color works, especially when you're re rendering and your workflow. I use Adobe Premiere and After Effects. And the whole purpose of being a content creator and having a dual screen is that it allows you to have more workspace so you can have multiple tabs open. So what I do is let's say on my uh, Dell 24 19 is I have Photoshop and in my XPS 15, I have, let's say, After Effects or Premiere, and I'm constantly switching between the two, so I have to constantly minimize and maximize. Or when I'm looking at video editing notes from a client, I can look back and forth, and that is a huge advantage to speed up my workflow, to have my workflow a lot easier, and how I can edit even faster, and as well as having color accuracy to see something, whether or not I can check whether or not I'm editing in my Dell XPS 15, is that accurate? Or can I go to my second monitor, drag it over, and see how that difference is when I'm actually editing. So what I donh like about the P2419H is that you're looking at not as sharp in terms of its color contrast and depth compared to, let's say, the Ultra model. So you're looking at the Ultra Sharp monitor is that it is the, the U2419H. If you have the budget, having spending $150 more and you want to be a specifically super fine point when it comes to coloring and editing and color correction, I would much recommend you pick up the 2419 U model where this is the professional series. And I'm glad that the S series does not exist anymore because that is the standard def and that is long gone. So in terms of two options, you have the, the professional and the ultra fine or the ultra sharp. sharp. If you have the $150 plus, definitely pick that up. Link in the description below if you want to check it out. And for me, it's not so much the matter of it's whether or not it's sharpness enough or it's, it's more about the color accuracy. And for me, looking for the longest time I've been editing on the XPS 15, as you can see through my own color test, is that the difference between having a monitor that, that's more color accurate versus let's say factory settings of a generic monitor, although I love my XPS 15, it's not so much color accurate for your video editing needs. But for my own content needs, it's good to have a second monitor so you can always color reference and see whether or not you know your colors are actually your colors. And overall, notice that you're paying for something that's sharp and thin, but not as sharp for the best budget talking about. If that makes sense, is that you're paying for what you get for. So first thing I noticed, it is really heavy compared to any of the other budget monitors. Probably if you're looking at paying 150 bucks more, I would think that the 2419 U model, ultra fine model is going to be lighter, is heavier, but I do like about it is one of the reasons I got it, it is height adjustable. And not only is it height adjustable, it is, you can rotate this guy, right? I'm trying to do this on the whim here, you feel me? But for me, I'm just gonna use it in, uh, Landscape, not portrait. That was not sexy at all, but just the ability to have something that you can look up and it pans and tilts up and down. And in terms of assembly, it was super easy if y'all can see from that unboxing I did. And <laughs> that was my overall review and thoughts of the Dell Professional Series 2419H monitor. Do I recommend it for your budget video editor? Hell yes. If you don't pick that up yet, link in the description to know the exact model that I picked up. And if you have $150 plus to get something a little bit more sharp and fine, pick up the Ultra Series of the same model and make. And for me, it pretty much serves my needs as a video content creator, as more workspace, as well as my workflow, as well as color referencing. And I hope this video was able to help you. And if you want to get my free camera guide and get more serious about content creation, all my resources and links are in the description below. And uh, my name is Peter. You're watching A Broke Visionary Collective, where we all start with nothing, but you can always create something. Cheers, guys. If you watched this far, smash the thumbs up button for the algorithm. Peace out, yo.